Hi, today I'm going to show you how to set up deep linking for your React Native app for both iOS and Android. There are two types of deep links. One is basically in your called universal linking, which makes your um, regular website URL link to your app. And the other one is your classic approach where you can create a custom URL that links to your app. So depending on your project requirements, you may need either of them or both of them. For example, if you implement universal linking, which is the better option most of the time, you may need URL schemes for basically things like Facebook ads, where if you use universal links, it will open your website in the Facebook browser instead of opening your app. So I'm going to show you how to implement both of them. You can find the difference between the two approaches. In this URL, I'm going to link in the description below. And in Android, universal links are actually called app links. I've created a dummy React Native app with two screens for this tutorial. This is the app. Basically, it doesn't do much. It just has two screens so that we can test navigation later on. And here's the code. Very simple. This is for the home screen, and this is for the detail screen, and this is the navigator. So we're going to get started with iOS and implement it all the way and then move on to Android. Let's go to Xcode. Let's start with the easier one, which is URL scheme. So we'll go to the info tab, expand URL types, press the add button. So for the identifier field, you need the bundle identifier. Go to general tab and copy your bundle identifier and paste it here. And enter the URL scheme you would like. And this is basically it. To test this, we'll have to reinstall the app. So let's do that. Okay, so let's go to Safari to test it. Let's write down the URL here. It will ask you if it if you want to open the link in your app. And there you go. That's all you need to do to implement URL scheme in iOS. Now we can move on to universal link. So universal links are easy as well. There's just one more step you need to do, which is basically you need to verify the domain that you want to link to your app. And to do that, you need to upload a JSON file to your website. Let's go back to Chrome. So I can show you an example of that. So here's what my file looks like. I'm actually going to be implementing it for a subdomain, but you can easily implement it for a top level, top level domain. So whatever your domain is, the path has to be dot well known slash Apple app site association. You basically need your team ID and your bundle ID. To learn more about this file, you can go to this link on the Apple website. I'm gonna leave the link below. So let's go back to Xcode and implement this. For this, you need to go to signing and capabilities tab, press on capability, 
double click associated domains press add over here write app links and whatever your URL is and this is it so basically if you have verified your domain it will work so with the domain verification happens when the app is reinstalled or installed for the first time so let's do that Okay, let's close the app. Go back to Safari. Let's try out the URL test. So if you see it opens the URL, but if you scroll up, it tells you to open the URL in the app. So now our universal link works as well so the next step is to actually navigate based on the link so if you're going to test out Saad Ibrahim slash details you should go to the details screen directly so for that we need to add some code to the iOS app delegate file let's do that let's go back to Chrome let's go to react native documentation for linking scroll down so these are the code bits we need to copy paste go to vs code all the way down before the end let's go back and because we are implementing you know it's a links we also need to copy paste this let's move the import statement to the right place Okay, so the next step is to actually configure React Navigation to handle the incoming links. This is the page that will tell you how to do that. This is for Expo. This is what applies to us, so. Basically go to VS Code. So now what we just did was that we told React Navigation to recognize both the universal link and the URL scheme that we had registered earlier. Now let's go back to Safari and test this out. Let's close the app. Let's append details to this because that's the screen name. Well, it's not an existing page on the website, but I'm just showing you guys an example. 
Now, if you see, it opens on the details screen. There's another way to handle this. So let's go back to Chrome. Go to linking. Scroll down. So basically you can use the React Native linking library to get the URL that was used to open the app. And that way you can manually navigate or do any other actions that you would like, depending on your project requirements. Let me show you an example. Let's comment this out. And this as well. We'll import the linking library and alert component as well. We're going to use the use effector hook since this is a functional component and use the linking dot get your get initial URL function to get the URL. I've already written the code for this. Basically what's happening here is that when your app launches, you get the URL. If it's not null, basically it will be null if there was no deep link used to open your app. If it was open normally, for example, and this is where we tell it to navigate it to the detail screen. Of course, your production app logic would be way more different than this. This is just an example. I just want to point out that the reason we need alert here is because, first of all, deep linking doesn't work in debugging mode. So if you have the React Native debugger on, deep linking won't work. So you won't get a URL. And in that case, console log won't do anything. My bad, we're supposed to check for null here. Let's test it out as we start the app. Go to Safari, open the same URL. Now you'll see what the URL was and it navigates to that URL. So now we'll do the same for Android, which is slightly easier. Let me open our app in Android. So we've got our app running, basically the same thing. Now what we need to do is update the manifest file. And we're going to implement both kind of links together. Let's go to VS Code. So first of all, we have to make sure this is single task. In some cases, just a single top. And we're going to add two intent filters. So as you can see, the first one has this auto verify true. This is important. And this is for the app link or universal link. As you can see here, the scheme is HTTPS. The host is test Asad Ibrahim. And this is for the URL scheme. So this doesn't need the auto verify thing. And it only requires scheme, which is Saad Ibrahim and no host. I'll definitely leave a link to the GitHub repo so you can copy paste this code. You can find more about this code in the article that I'll link as well. This is where you can find more about this. 
let's save it. So before we can test this, we need to verify the domain for Android as well. For that, we need to create another file in the same location. Let me show you an example. So this is the file, this is my file for Android. You, you need the package name, which you can find in the build gradle file inside the app folder in the Android directory, which is here. Build gradle. This is your application ID. This is what you need. And you need the SHA-56 certificate fingerprint. So to get this, you can use this tool. So let's go back. Okay, so to test this, let's turn off our app and delete it from the device. Reinstall it and Now we can use the terminal to test it out. Let's, let's turn off the app. These are the commands you can use to test the links in terminal. The first two are for Android, the later two are for iPhone. So let's copy the first one. As you can see, it works perfectly. Let's try this next one. Again, works perfectly. So I'm gonna leave these commands in the GitHub readme. And I hope you found this useful. Thanks.